I think it started before the 80s. Yeah. I was involved with teams in 77, where we won, I think, a county junior A football final, which was won with pure determination and grit. In, 80, in 78, then, I think we won the West Senior football final, mm. which was my first senior divisional mm. medal. And we beat the then county champions at the time. So I suppose you'd be starting to believe then you were yeah. as good as anything else yeah, you met. Yeah. And then some of us from the parish got involved in county under-21 teams and got trials and you'd see other players that up till then you would have thought were better than you. Mm. And you would realise at that stage then that possibly you could be as good as them if, mm. if you really had the ambition. Yeah. So that was a big factor, but really the physical training as well yeah. upped a, a couple of notches with the, you know, in the 80s. And also playing better teams. I, I'm a firm believer that you have to play against better teams to improve your own game. Mm. And I've no doubt about the fact that we went playing teams from outside of the county and the better teams in, in Kilkenny and Cork, for example, that you'd have to come up to that standard and, and you knew that was the standard you had to get to. And what was the training like that year in 87? As you know, we got in a different man for training in the form of an early man, Rusty Keane. Very physical trainer. Yeah. Admitted the first day he came, didn't know an awful lot about Roland. Plus, made up for it in other ways. Like what? Getting frame of mind right and believing in yourself, really. He had three famous words pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah. But the training was completely different in '87. It was rusty because it was very physical, and mm. he seemed to be kind of to the lack of kind of strength training. He yeah, had us yeah. lifting fellas up on our shoulders and yeah. a lot of exercises. It was complete. I'd say, to a long time, it was a novelty. Yeah. Because it was like something we had never done before. Yeah. You could be doing six different things after doing a round of the field. You know, yeah. you do one exercise down here, then you move up and do another mm -hmm. exercise. You know, it was completely different to us, and I'd say that the fact that it was different, fellas were looking forward to it, you know, yeah, that yeah. Just, just, there, wasn't a, there wasn't a whole lot of rounds of the fields or anything yeah, like that yeah. in it, you know, it was strictly physical training, you know. And did, did it toughen you up? I'd say it strengthened us yeah. more, you know, I'd say it made, a, gave us, made our, our upper bodies stronger than that, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you were below in the field trying to lift a box up on your shoulders, <laughs> you, you wouldn't be long about getting big shoulders. <laughs> but um, I know I'd say that it was, you know, he had us doing, I don't know, he had do, us doing exercises that we never did before, yeah, say, yeah. you know. He was the type of man that you just kind of, you stood up and you listened to. Hmm. After all, he was about six foot three or that. Yeah. Basically, like, the team at the time were proud of lads like, that did listen. Hmm. And if they were asked to go up a wall backwards, they would. 87 had its, had its moments of, of uh, fear as well. Um, case in point was the West final where Clenorty got off to a, a dream start and were nine points ahead at mm. half time. Mm. But uh, the particular squad had fantastic potential and they were moved around, shall we say, yeah. forwards that had been playing in the backs were re, 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 reallocated. When we were lining out at half time, there was a friend of mine from work, he was crossing over the field. Yeah. And he says to me, Mackie, I'm nearly finished. And I said, Jesus, Pat, give us a few more minutes, we're not finished yet. <laughs> but it just goes to prove that anything can happen in another match in the yeah. game of Holland. You know, I mean, a couple of quick goals and a few pints and you're, yeah. you're, gone from, you're coming from no place back up on top again, you know. Yeah. But I, I'd say that that was the best Holland that we played yeah. all that year, yeah. you know, that, that half an hour in cash. Yeah. Then, uh, what was it, I suppose, like around Cap in the lead up to the match? First time this club had ever been, had reached that state? Uh, the talk was brilliant and the laughing was brilliant with neighbouring parishes and things yeah. like that. Um, it was all the talk then, all, all the goal at the time, those bands put up and pubs that time were going great of course. Yeah, yeah. It was chief topic, you know. Mm. 
I, what I really remember is I, I used to drive the bread van locally to mm. Anna Carty and Hollyford and Kilcommon, Rare Cross, Doon, Capmore, all the mm. bordering villages. And what really struck me at the time was the goodwill mm. from other parishes towards Capo White. Fellas that often had hit me in our belt when I was yeah. hurling against yeah. them were coming up saying the best to look next Sunday in the county final and I hope you win it. And, I really felt they were genuine. Yeah. No, there was no Ben on drink, but like he kept us fair and reason, like you know. There was a bit of nervousness going to the match, though. Oh, well, you, were, you, were, you <laughs> see, when there wasn't the county final, in, or you were never before in West Tipperary, you yeah. would never, you'd never go confident. Yeah, yeah. Saying that, though, Captain White had a great team and were looking good. Yeah, yeah. Shane was the mascot. Yeah, yeah. my hands were kind of full, kind of <laughs> watching him before the match, <laughs> and getting him tugged off and. He was inside the dressing room and I remember when we were marching around he was with Fox. And I don't know, but I must have been back, of course Fox would have been up in the front and I was at the back. Because mm. I was number 15. And when we were going back into our places then he was standing outside in the middle of the field. <laughs> so I got him. And I, I remember calling John Belly. Mm -hmm. He was a soul to take him away mm -hmm. out to the line. I suppose I was kind of yeah. watching him more than <laughs> <laughs> watching the match for a few minutes. Was, uh, he was delighted to be the mascot. And, and, uh... Yeah, didn't really notice yeah. the crowd now yeah. or anything at that stage. Um, just looking forward to the game. Knew that if lot more were going to beat us, they would have to be pretty, yeah. fairly good. Were, were you nervous now? Yeah, definitely a little bit nervous. Um, nervous of, you know, nervous of making a mistake or missing yeah. a score. and. Um, but once the game then starts and you settle into it, yeah. you don't be nervous. You just go for the ball if it's in your area and yeah. that's it. Yeah. All of a sudden they were gone away, like, well ahead. How much were they? I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was five or six points. Yeah. Did the belief ever leave you that you wouldn't be? No. Yeah. Like I said, the night of the West Final against Clenorty, when we came back from that mm. eight or nine point deficit and won as comfortably as we did, Four or five or six pints in arrears wasn't a worry, yeah. because you know we had, we were capable of, of scoring a couple of goals and a couple of pints in a few minutes if we got a run on any defence. Yeah, we had some great forwards I'd consider at the time. Practically every forward was capable of getting a score. Yeah, and and that was probably a strength of that Capital White team at the time. Even if one guy had a bad day, someone else was getting a score. So. I always felt that um, we could we could cut cut deficits back fairly lively if we got a run on the team. Yeah. Mm. Say we were probably nervous. Yeah. Two stepping off, you know that we were we would the uh, occasion might have got us a bit yeah. for a few minutes. But no, I don't think Penny ever actually said it. Yeah. It just you just potted it on and kept going, and it came back to us. Yeah. Ten minutes before half time, but the game changed. Yeah. Maybe a few position changes here and there again, and they worked. So we have to thank the men on the line for that. You so. know, half times and and even the very before a match on the yeah. day, what happens in the dressing rooms when a team is there or thereabouts to yeah. win a championship, what happens on those times and those days doesn't really have a huge bearing. Mm. The work is done for weeks and months previously. Yeah. yeah. And really, you don't change everything. Really, what happens at that stage when you have a fairly good team at half time, people say, Well, look, settle now. We didn't play as well as we could. We know we're better than this, and we'll come back into it. Yeah. it, it nothing is just turned upside down and, and a magic wand is waved. Yeah. That doesn't happen. But fellas who haven't played as well as they might have, they question themselves and, and they know they have to up it. Mm. And maybe a player is friendly with another guy and he might say to him, you know, there's more in you or whatever. But yeah. really, I do believe dressing rooms at that stage are what said isn't mm. often a major factor. Yeah. Did, it, did it look gone at any stage? It didn't look gone, um, but it looked... It looked um, it looked within reach, but maybe not reached. Mm. Uh, and that was the pattern right through the game. And I suppose, looking back on it afterwards, you know, there was an element of luck in it too. Mm. Uh, time was running out, shall we say. Mm. Time was running out. And, uh, you know, 
you would maybe settle for a draw, you maybe would consider and have to be happy if you're beaten by a point, but at the same time we were lucky yeah. and we just got that score uh, before the final whistle. I remember kind of lying short of Brennan in here. Yeah. He was a big last year. Oh, he went off a lot more? Yeah. And was there, I suppose, what was, was there one moment during the final that you kind of suddenly realised, you know, we might be out for this? I tell you, it went down to the wire to the last puck of the ball, yeah. like really. I think actually Austin scored a winning point, but after that, not more got a chance yeah. to um, level things up. Mm. And Pat and Grass dropped a free mm. and went to the left and right. Mm. And until such time as the actually final whistle was gone, yeah. did you we realise we had it. Yeah, but the, do you remember when? Do you remember? Mick? Score that winning point, you know. Do you, is that a moment you're a bit? Is, is that a, I suppose a very fun memory for you, scoring that point at the end. I do, and and I don't want to say too much about it because I don't want to be accused of <laughs> of having a big head of it yeah. over it or anything. But I would be very proud of that yeah. fact. It's it's a score that I never forget, even though I the easy end of it. The hard work was done. Yeah. Out the field from even Mike Buckley, the full back. Mm -hmm who would remind me of that yeah. fact occasionally when I'd meet him, yeah. even though I don't think he ever struck a ball out of his hand <laughs> until that one. <laughs> but uh, it was worked yeah. from the full back line up, and Ger O'Neill had a huge part in it. He, well, did you receive the pass from Ger, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ger, I would like to think Ger and myself, having played for a good few years together, mm -hmm. had some little bit of mental telepathy or yeah. other. And and Ger often set me up for a score because he was he was a man of great vision mm. and, and a su super hurler. Mm. And and I doubt I've ever played with anyone as good as Ger Yeah. Was what was it like for you when we say when the final whistle was gone? What was your first reaction? I suppose the one thing looking back on it, I suppose it was just something that happened at the time. I honestly think it was all over before we realised what it actually was, mm -hmm. what it actually meant. Because, you know, it didn't happen until virtually time was up. You, you got no uh, warning that mm -hmm. you were going to be yeah. crowned county champions. But, you know, during the course of the night, when it did sink in and when you came back when you particularly when you came back to Kappa White and you saw so many people you realised that this thing actually has happened mm. and we are county champions. Yeah, the final whistle went it was definitely one of the best moments of, of, of my life anyway, yeah. Mm. It was it was just you had achieved something that was definitely a dream. We had been close enough a few years previously in semi-finals and we'd lost semi-finals and we knew we shouldn't have lost. Yeah. But to get in there on your first occasion and win it was just something special, just there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Because uh, how big an event was it for you? Oh, by far the greatest thing in my sport in life. Yeah. Miles ahead of anything previous, you know. What about me? You, you won a county under 21, did you? I or, did. Uh, All Ireland under 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won a couple of All Ireland under 21s, which were nice too, but yeah. it's different when you win something with your club. Yeah. It's totally different. Um, they're the lads you went to school with, they're the lads you played in the green with, yeah. they're the lads you went to the discos with, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're the lads you're meeting every Sunday at Mass, mm -hmm. they're the lads you're playing indoor soccer with now in the hall they're the lads who are running the club yeah um you know they're your people your parish yeah. and uh the county is the next step but the parish and the club i would i would if i had ever won all Ireland medals yeah. i would give them all away for one county championship medal yeah. was it better than your wedding day no you know you <laughs> <laughs> we had fantastic support from right through our own division mm -hmm. it was not alone was it a big thing for cap white uh, winning a county final it was a major achievement for west tipperary mm -hmm. uh, 
because it hadn't happened since 1943, so very few people actually remembered it happening before. And all those people who came to Capo White that night, as they did go to Torles that day, and we also had fantastic support from our neighbours, Dune, mm. and they were also present on the night. What was a great day anyway, we were all terribly excited when we came home then and I was organised to meet the team outside the village. Yeah. With Lowy and Brian Mean and yeah, yeah. there was music and... And I suppose the one thing about sport is, is you know, win or lose, there was fantastic friendship gained from it too, where on Monday uh, some of the Lockmore players came over and uh, joined Capo mm -hmm. in their celebrations. Good things must come to an end and so must this program. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it and that we look forward to your input into next year's DVD. Finally, our last segment is a song performed by many people within the community, something that doesn't happen too often. We may not have a huge amount of rock stars in our midst, but what we do have is people who are willing to give it a go and we hope you enjoy it. All that's left for us to say is thank you for watching and best wishes for 2008. From Anne and myself, Slavon and Gisbanet. Just a perfect place Somewhere to be myself Where people can be themselves Just a perfect day Dressed up for a fashion show Then later a bag of chips And then home What?